Experience is one of the most important and valuable resources in Minecraft, being used for mainly enchanting and repairing tools or armor. You simply never have enough XP, so this video I listed my top 3 XP farms for 1.20 and 1.19. Thank you Awesome Remote for sponsoring this video. With Awesome Remote you can remotely control your PC using your phone or other PC anytime and wherever you want and it's available for all Windows, iOS and Android devices. The best thing about this is that it's completely free. You can use it for a quick AFK farming session or to access Java Edition on your phone when the PC is out of range. Besides that, you can also use this software for screen mirroring simply using a QR code and transfer files between your devices which can be a real pain without such a program. Additionally, there are two more than affordable paid versions adding useful features like a fully customizable keyboard and supporting up to 144Hz for a high quality mobile gaming experience. They recently launched a smart plug which lets you remotely wake your PC whenever you need it saving you some extra money. So now the first 200 people using this exact code for downloading will get a free 7 day trial for all the awesome features. I definitely try it. The first good experience farm I want to show you is an AFK fish experience farm. In order to build it, what you want to do is to destroy three blocks in a row like this, then place a double chest right there and behind that a hopper that funnels towards the double chest. Now behind the hopper you want to place three blocks in this exact shape and you want to build this wall three blocks high like this right here. Then. What you want to do is to stack up some blocks like this and place a block right at the top. They want to place a temporary rail and a minecart with hopper on top. Now go down again like this and destroy the block underneath the minecart with hopper. As you can see the minecart with hopper will drop down and we will have the rail in the double chest. Now what you can do is to place an oak sign right there or some other sign that you want and it should be right at the place where you got the minecart with hopper so you have the minecart with hopper and the sign in the same spot. Now as the next step you want to come behind the double chest, then you want to place a stair, then at this side of the stair you want to place another stair but this time facing upwards, on top of that stair place a third stair, then a block behind and a fourth stair on top. So it got a nice staircase to the top of the farm. In this spot right here, right on top of the sign, we can now go ahead and place ourselves the lava. As you can see, the lava should not flow down because we got a sign right there which blocks it from flowing down. On top of this exact block right here, you want to place yourself a chest and you want to surround it with signs, so you want to place a sign on either side of this chest. Really make sure that you did this correctly and then what you can do is to waterlock this chest. As you can see no water should spill out because we got it surrounding by signs. Now our setup is complete. What I recommend to do is to take yourself a fishing rod with the low 3 enchantment as it will give you a higher frequency of catch fish and therefore more experience in the same time. In order to use it what you want to do is to just look at the front sign of the chest and then you want to cast out your fishing rod like this. Now you just have to wait until you catch a fish, as you can see the rod retracts, you will get the experience and the item will be in the chest right here. Whenever the rod retracts you just have to cast it out again by looking at the sign and clicking so this design will make you fishing very easy. Also, don't worry, using this design you'll still be able to get the usual amount of enchanted books, add luck of the C3 to your fishing rod and this will maximize the amount of treasure you get from this farm. Now if you want to have a farm with a higher output of experience, then I recommend sticking with this gold farm, it will deliver you level 30 in about 4 and a half minutes. Now once you found yourself a kind of flat area looking something like this, what you want to do is to place a row out of blocks that is 23 blocks long, 22 and 23. And now on top of this you want to place a row out of obsidian. Once you got this you want to stack up 22 more obsidian blocks, so now we are at y98 so plus 22 equals 120. Here we are, we now just have to connect both sides to a full nether portal frame. 
Now we need a flint and steel to test on which sides the zombie piglins spawn. They will either spawn to one or the other side, but not both of them. So let's light the portal and see if zombie piglins spawned. If they didn't spawn, then you just want to destroy one block of the obsidian portal frame. Then of course you want to replace it and you want to turn on the portal again. If this didn't work, then just repeat it. And as you can see, there we got a zombie piglin spawning, so the zombie piglins in this case are spawning towards that side of our portal. Now on this side, what you want to do is to create a water stream. In order to do this, you want to place a 2x2 wall at both sides of the portal, right at the edge of the frame of course. So in this position right here, and then connect both of them with a line of glass. Now of course a second layer on top for a whole wall. And at the end you should be left with one glass block. We'll need that one later, but as the next step you want to place water at both ends of our portal, so like this. Then as you can see, the water is not enough to flood the entire area, so what you want to do is to dig out one block right at the end of our water stream, at uh, both water streams, and then just connect both of them. At the rough middle of them you want to place two buttons like this and then you want to dig down 20 blocks out going from these buttons. Now as you can see we got the portal at this side of the portal. You want to turn to the opposite side and there you want to destroy these six blocks right here. Now as you can see we got some space to work on which is a 4x4x2 four by four by room. Now at every other block like this you want to place a piston facing towards you. Then at the side of the piston right here you want to place reds and torches but on the corner side and not the middle side like this. So right here as well, then right here as well and at this one too. Now facing the torches you want to place observers. The arrows should point from the torches towards the pistons of course on all four sides as well. As you can see we got that gap right here which means that this is the AFK side. You want to go three blocks into this direction, of course dig out some blocks so that you have some good space where you can stand. Right behind this exact piston you want to place a lever and what you want to do is to just place a row out of blocks so you just have that 2x2 two two space in the middle. Now to finish off our trident killer you want to throw a trident onto that exact piston right here. If we flick the lever right here as you can see the trident will get pushed around, just flick it off for now. Then we want to place two blocks in this exact position, so right above the observer and the piston and we want to place a glass and another block right here. This will allow us to pick up all the experience later. Now if you want to collect all the items that get dropped by the zombie piglins, we can build a collection system. In order to do this, we will need some space to work on. As you can see, we are right underneath our trident killer. There you want to set a marking block like this, then dig yourself two blocks down and now destroy some blocks underneath the marking block and then we will be able to place a double chest right here, a hopper on top then a rail on top of that hopper and a minecart with hopper on top of the rail. Just enclose this minecart with some blocks so that the minecart will not be able to get off of that hopper and our collection system is finished. If you want to, you can expand your storage system and then depending on how much storage space you want, you just have to place double chests in this pattern like this and you want to place hoppers underneath the double chest pointing towards the other and of course in this corner as well. In order to easily access this spot you can just place yourself some ladders right at the back of the wall like this and of course you want to have a floor. Now as the last step we'll need to build two small but functional contraptions. In order to build the first one you want to go on top of that wall and you want to place a block behind this obsidian right here. Then on top of this block you want to place a dispenser facing the portal. Now you want to turn towards this direction and place an observer like this and of course the eyes should point towards this side. Then you want to place another observer but this time looking into the opposite direction and as you can see this will automatically make the dispenser dispense. Now two blocks underneath this observer you want to place a sticky piston facing upwards. Then you want to place a lever at this side of the sticky piston and flick it two times in order to shut it off. This will be the on and off switch for the entire farm. Lastly, you want to put a water bucket in this dispenser and then as you can see, this will automatically turn the portal on and off whenever you need it. 
Now flick it off for now and we'll be able to build the second contraption which will be at the other side of the portal, so right here. In order to build it, stack up by 5 right at the side of the portal. Then you want to extend out into this direction by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 in this direction. Then just come back and finish off the rectangle. Now you want to place one observer pointing into this direction and then six more into the opposite direction. Make sure that all of them should face this side. So if you place one upside down, then of course you want to replace them like this. Now as the next step, you want to place some doors which are in between the observers and the portal right on top of these blocks. Then you want to place some blocks around so you got a small wall. And then right on top of the middle observer which is this one you want to place lava and this will make the whole farm complete. Never mind, a last feature that I still recommend adding is to place a button right at the back of this dispenser because sometimes the portal is on but your farm is off and in order to change that you can just press this button and the portal will turn off as well. Now your farm is finished and you'll be able to use it in survival mode. In order to do this, what you want to do is to come to this side, flick this lever, then you want to drop down your letters right here and right here you want to activate your trident killer. If everything works, then all the experience will start to get you just when you stand on top of this block right in front of the glass. As you can see, this farm is very very quick. As mentioned, you will get to level 30 in about 4 and a half minutes. Whenever you want to collect your items that you got from this farm, you can do this right at the bottom double chest. This will soon or later fill up and other items will fill up in the other chests as well. Now the last farm that I want to show you is another gold farm, but just on steroids. As you can see, it contains four of the maximum size portals. And in comparison to four of these one that I've already shown you, it is pretty cheap to build. It will also give you level 30 in about one and a half minute, which is insane. Of course, in general, it has the same principles as the usual one portal gold farm with the dispenser clock right here and with our door and lava thing right there, which will power the portals. But we got a big water stream underneath the portals to funnel all these zombie piglins into our two killing chambers because one is not fast enough and will have zombie piglins clog up in it. Also, as you can see, in our storage system, we have a ton of these golden swords. So one thing I like to do is to place a lava source nearby and then we can just open the double chest through the lava. And then if we press Q on top of the golden sword, then as you can see, the golden sword will drop into the fire and will get deleted. So we can do this pretty quickly for the entire double chest. So in my opinion, this is a good method to get rid of all the golden swords. If you want to have a full tutorial on this quad gold farm, then a link to it will be in the video description. Then I hope that this video helped you to get a ton of experience in your survival world. And if it did, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and comment down your problems. I hope me or someone else can help you right there. If you want to get in contact with me, do this in our Discord server. Of course, thanks again to Awesome Remote and then we'll see us again in the next video. See ya!